This is F Society IRC Podcast, a Mr. Robot show. I'm your moderator of this chat, Hiroja Shai. Please note that this podcast will have spoilers. In this chat, we will discuss the underlying themes, historical influences, inspirations, technology, ethical dilemmas, and other inspirational insights we have gleaned from each episode of the first season of Mr. Robot. We will be bringing on experts to share their insights and knowledge with us in each chat. We will also be reviewing each episode of the as well as the second season when it premieres. We are awake, we are free, we are alive for F Society IRC Podcast. And you are joining me for a discussion on the season two premiere of Mr. Robot, which is done in two parts. We're going to discuss the first part, which is kind of called Unmask Part One. The actual title of the episode is uh, done, as always, in a computer format with the ending fix at uh, .tc. And we'll discuss that because all the titles of the episodes thus far that have been revealed all have to do with encryption. But we'll get back to that later on in the episode when we discuss uh, theories and things that are real uh, associated with this episode. But let's begin with our discussion of the first part of the season premiere of Mr. Robot. What happens is that the episode, uh, besides the initial preview catch up for people, it opens the day of the hack which we know to be 5-9, May 9th of the year 2015, which is interesting considering throughout the first season, if you recall, a lot of time jump had been occurring. We know at the season finale, there was a three-day time jump from the day of the hack until Elliot woke up with no memory. But there has been a bit of a, a timey-wimey, if you will, to borrow a term from Doctor Who, or a sliding time scale when it comes to the place in time that Elliot is because he he has blackouts. He gets taken over by Mr. Robot. He doesn't recall things um, as has been revealed towards the end of uh, the series, the season one. So we have no idea a lot of times when events occur, what place they occur, or if they even occurred at all. But we do know from outside sources as we get into it, that the hack occurs at 5-9. And we see Elliot with uh, Tyler Wellick, and they are at the F Society hideout at the arcade. And it's them in the facility. Uh, Tyler Wellick, he, he's wearing the F Society mask. Uh, he kind of questions Elliot a little bit about it, thinking it's kind of, kind of hooky, kind of hokey. He does receive a phone call from someone named James, uh, about the honeypot, about the honeypot server that Gideon had set up, and making sure because as we it was revealed at the end of the season uh, last year that the honeypot is deactivated, so that way F Society Elliot can have control of it. Because after all, Wellick was fired, and so he is pissed. Not only was he not promoted to CTO of E Corp or Evil Corp, if you will but he was also fired the day of the hack. So Tyler Wellick is there. Elliot talks to the Dark Army, Army chat. Uh, they normally don't move their timeline, timeline, which was agreed to, but they agreed to the change. Uh, Elliot is talking to them. And then Elliot starts the hack. And then Wellick is witnessing it on the computer and he says something is coming alive. And as Elliot uh, walks away from the computer, walks away from what's happening, and Wellick is just sitting there on the screen watching what's happening. He goes to the popcorn machine, which we know to have the gun inside that Darling put in there, and he reaches his hand in and it looks like he's going for the gun, and then it cuts away. So right there, off the initial start, a lot has been revealed to us. Uh, we know that our we believe at this point that Wellick and Elliot were together when the hack happens, that they were at the F Society headquarters, and that the hack was launched, and that the Dark Army joined them, and they, as we know from this, the season finale, they were successful in their hack. Then we jump to Elliot and, as a young child, and he is on the ground in the snow, and this is the day that he is tossed out of the window by his father, because he revealed to his mother that uh, that his father was sick. 
that he has leukemia, that he told the truth to his mother and his father got mad and tossed him out the window. So Elliot, you know, is being surrounded by his mother and his father. Uh, it's interesting in this that as uh, Mr. Robot, the actual real person, the, the live individual that is his father, is rushing to to Elliot's side and his mother is rushing and, and they're kind of arguing, like she's yelling at his father, you know, what did you do? What did you do? And, you know, Mr. Robot, his father is like, Elliot's father, the real individual is like, it was an accident, it was an accident. Uh, I found it very interesting because there's a lot of visuals that go on with uh, the series that Elliot's mother is kind of out of phase. She's kind of faded out. You can't really clearly see her. And I find that very interesting considering that last season as the illusions that he was having of her, the memories he's having, because she was very abusive, it was very clear and very defined. But this season, she seems to be a little out of focus in the past. So Elliot is taken to the hospital. There's a doctor who's talking with the parents. Uh, there's a lot of, you know, scans, because after all, he did fall out of the window. He did hit, you know, cracked his head a bit. Turns out he broke his arm, that he has no lesions, uh, that he doesn't seem to have any kind of type of concussion. There's no obvious signs of brain damage, which I think is very important because we do know that Elliot has delusions, that he has a psychosis, he has issues, he has problems. Uh, he's obviously having some, he's either some kind of form of schizophrenic or some kind of significant mental breakage has occurred where he is you know being controlled by a different personality having these delusions having these kind of hallucinations these unreality these blackouts that it's that it's not an actual physical occurrence that happened to him like his head getting getting knocked as a child uh is not responsible for this this is all maybe internal or maybe biological that is what's happening to elliot that is not actual like a hardware damage that is happening which I think is important because uh, the emphasis on this season seems to be very strongly towards, a, as it always has been, but a stronger emphasis on software. So that is the first hint on there that the, the show is done. And then they cut to present day Elliot as he is in a, a kind of a isolated room. And we'll get back into it because there's a very significant theory about where Elliot truly is and, and what is happening to him. But as for now, we're going to go from what is being presented. And Elliot is in what seems to be kind of like a halfway house, halfway place, and it's being run by his mother, which is interesting. Uh, he has gone back, if you will, to go live with his mother. And he has what he calls a routine, a regiment, a routine that allows him to keep Mr. Robot at bay, that he does these repetitive activities every single day. He has the same form of interactions, a constant loop as he will, to keep Mr. Robot from taking control of him. Uh, he has a journal in which he journals into his daily activities, daily routines, what has occurred, um, and he goes by the hour, half hour, times it out, even the little conversations that he may have with Mr. Robot, he writes out for the sole purpose of trying to keep uh, Mr. Robot from taking over. Uh, Elliot does not want that to happen anymore. Uh, one of the things that we learn is that it's a one month after the hack, so it's June 9th of 2015. He's doing his regiment. Uh, you know, he has lunch at 12:30. He does the dishes at 4:30. He has dinner at 6:30. He, twice a week he goes to a church group and, and talks to people. So he has this routine he has. Um, he has his friend that he talks to during lunchtime called Leon. And Leon has these conversations about Seinfeld and what he thinks about the show. And it's a very banal, very um, interesting kind of mundane conversations. And Elliot just sits there and just listens. He doesn't really engage with Leon but he just kind of nods and listens to his the patter of conversation uh, a one little tidbit about Leon which was caught and that it was found on reddit and I, I will have a link in the post is that Leon has a Chinese character on his hand now that could be just you know any random tattoo but considering that the dark army has uh, a strong affiliation has ties of uh, 
significant ties with the Chinese group, whether they are actually either sponsored by the Chinese government or just simply a, a Chinese hacker group. It would be interesting to note that Leon has a Chinese symbol on him. He could be affiliated with the Dark Army. It could be just very uh, coincidental, if you will. Uh, but we're going to move on. Uh, Elliot continues on having his sessions with Krista. Uh, Krista, you know, is a little hesitant about it. She only agreed to help Elliot because Elliot was going to be more forthcoming and more honest. Uh, so they're having their sessions and she questions his Elliot why he chose to go to be with his mom. And that was pretty much the end of it. He said that, you know, he'd rather be with the devil he knows than the devil you don't. And then it cuts away again. There's a lot of quick cuts in this um, in this episode, which kind of kind of is a bit unnerving because it brings a lot of tension in the episode. Because as we know already, that Elliot is an unreliable narrative, so we have a little bit more uncertainty of what is truly happening around us and what events are truly real. So he cuts away, and this is a, as he cuts away, he finally begins to talk to the audience his friends that he's not ready to reveal what he has told to Krista, uh, what his issues are, what his problems, what the full session it was with Krista. And the reason being is because he doesn't trust us because we didn't tell him that, you know, Mr. Robot, this illusion that he was having was not only the image of his father, but somebody that was taking over his body in person and basically controlling him and that we didn't reveal that to him. So, he is not talking to us fully or completely. Also, when he's having these conversations with uh, Mr. Robot about control of himself, about getting back to F Society, getting back to the plan, getting back to, you know, going back after Evil Corp, Mr. Robot won't tell Elliot what he wants to know, which is where Tyler Wellick is. And because Mr. Robot won't tell him about the, the three day missing period of time and won't tell him where Wellick is currently, he, Elliot is not going to interact with Mr. Robot and he's keeping it at bay. Um, Mr. Robot does a lot of different things. He gets very angry with Elliot. Uh, he tries to shoot him in the head and then of course because he's an illusion, he, you know, he's not really shooting Elliot in the head and Elliot just kind of gets back up and, and moves along, which is which is very interesting is because there obviously is this very significant battle of control of Elliot as a person. But we're going to move on. Uh, Darlene uh, has taken over S Society. And what she has done is she has hacked into the smart house of the, of the main council, the main loader for Evil Court. And her name is... Susan Jacobs, and she is known as Madam Executioner. And the reason why she's known as Madam Executioner, as revealed by Darlene, is because any lawsuits associated with E Corp, there's always death associated. People just simply die, and the cases themselves die out. Uh, there are either no witnesses, no plaintiffs, or there's enough death associated with a case that it, it falls off, falls apart on the other side, and of course. Uh, evil court prevails. But what Darlene has done is she has taken over Susan Jacobs' uh, smart house. And it was just very fascinating to me because smart houses are the pervasive thing. It started almost, I would say, 20 years ago as a Microsoft project. There's other different types of companies out there. I believe Microsoft bought Nest, which is another smart house, smart house device. Um, there's Alexis. It's, it's all part of the internet things, which will Connect everything and anything in your home into a single computer system and can be controlled by you. So you control your lighting, your air conditioning, uh, your television. You can all pre-program everything. So as soon as you get up, you know, your coffee gets started, your, your breakfast can be made. Even stuff like your laundry, stuff getting picked up, delivered. Uh, your refrigerator will one day be a smart, smart device where it will automatically order the milk and the vegetables and the fruit or whatever that you need for the for the week and then the some delivery device will come to your home so basically it's like a, a window into the futurist aspect of what homes will one day be 
what when you connect everything to the internet or to a, a network is has the vulnerability of being hacked which is what happened to susan jacobs uh, she lost control of her AC unit. She lost control of her hot water. She lost control of just basically her entire house, making it uh, very difficult for her to live in. There was alarms popping up. Everything like that was happening. Uh, she tried to call the alarm company. You know, the alarm company basically said that the she had to turn everything off, that, but there was really nothing they can do because everything was in the walls. So she basically left her home and went to Connecticut uh, she, to her other home. And that's when Darlene and I guess you can either call them hanger honors or other associates that are part of F Society moved into the house. Uh, Darlene took over for the sole purpose of making it sort of like their headquarters. And they have been doing some things. Uh, they've been doing some protests. Uh, their latest action was taking uh, the balls off of the uh, Wall Street uh, bull. Their... It's interesting the direction that Darlene has taken the group. Um, I'm not really sure what's going on here. But she's taken over this house, and it's kind of a, symbolized, a symbolism, if you will, of taking over this house of this person they're going after. And I, I don't want to get more into the Darlene thing. I'm not going to go really scene by scene. But what she has done, I'm not sure if she did gain access to Susan Jacobs' home for the sole purpose of gaining access to uh, eCorp servers because maybe Susan Jacobs has a more direct access to it uh, because what has happened was that Darlene developed a ransomware program that she gives to Mosby, uh, one of the fellow original F Society hackers, and he as a, I'm not sure if he's an actual eCorp technician or posing as one, uh, as it's placed on a flash drive, goes and deploys the ransomware. And if you're unfamiliar with ransomware is, ransomware is basically a cryptography program that locks up people's hard drives, allows them to have the hacker to have complete access to uh, people's networks. It's been very much in the news the last three years. Uh, one of the ransomware demands is they get paid in Bitcoin and then they give the crypto keys to the the individual to unlock all their information. Um, depending on how people's setups are, they can be extremely vulnerable. If they don't have offline backups or backups somewhere else, they, they can lose everything. Uh, the hackers will just either break the servers, uh, take all the information, sell it, or you're no longer will you able to have access to the information and basically have to rebuild everything up again, which is very similar to what has happened with the E Corp things, but on a larger scale. Because instead of wiping everything out uh, as perceivably, perceivably what was intended to happen with the, the F Society hack, uh, Elliot and I guess you could say encrypted all the files uh, on the E Corp servers. So without that cryptography key, uh, eCorp is incapable of accessing their information, incapable of accessing the servers, incapable of doing any real type of banking business, uh, which we'll get into after we talk about Darlene. Uh, so this is just a, a mini version of that much larger cryptography program that was deployed earlier. And it's also kind of a tongue-in-cheek thing that they did. Um, what Darlene wanted with the ransomware thing was he wanted one of the chief operating officers or chief members of Evil Corp to go out to Battery Park, uh, bring $5.9 million, and then wait for them there. And once they arrive there, uh, instructions were going to be given, and they will be given. I will get to that in a second, but I think some of the Darlene's actions here with... Uh, the ransomware deployment, taking over Susan Jacobs' uh, house are very reckless. They're very kind of in-your-face type of actions that are going to get somebody caught, whether it be Darlene or another member of F Society, and as a whole, get all members of F Society caught. I think she's being extremely reckless, and it could be because, you know, she doesn't have her brother with her, uh, you know, Elliot is in this halfway house, uh, removed, if you will, for the moment, 
uh, not present in leading F society. At the same time, uh, Darlene feels that they haven't won, they haven't defeated uh, E Corp, Evil Corp, because they still exist, they still are functioning, they're still in the world. Um, she thinks things have become worse, and in a way it has. Uh, we have seen some of the, I mean, this has been a month after the hack, and we have seen some of the issues that have happened since the hack. Uh, businesses are closing. People's accounts are restricted to where they can only take out uh, a little bit of money, if you will. Uh, the ability to approve that your own account or have an account is very difficult. It could take weeks or months at a time. Uh, where Mosby was at the bank that he deployed the ransomware, which affected all the uh, Evil Corp servers and all their banking infrastructure. Uh, there was a customer there that said that, you know, I made my last payments for my mortgage. I own my home. I have all my documents. And the woman was saying that, the, the, the bank teller was saying that, you know, um, well, ma'am, it's not good enough. People are faking documents. Uh, we have no proof on our end. Uh, that you did that it's going to take weeks maybe even months to verify and the woman's very upset because it took her you know weeks to even get this appointment uh, she said you know she did make these payments and if she hadn't made these payments you know she would be the one that be kicked out of the home she has to understand why uh, she should be responsible for you know the failures on the part of evil corp uh, she, so she's very upset by that. She wants to withdraw all her funds and close all her accounts. She wants nothing more to do with the company. And then it turns out that she might not even gain, gain access or full access to all her money. So there's a lot of issues going on. Uh, you see signs uh, when people purchase and buy things to, to purchase them with uh, small bills. People have no credit or no debit cards are uh, being put up in signs and uh in stores, it's all cash only. You've seen uh, there was a look of a Bitcoin truck. Bitcoin is becoming an alternative means upon which people can obtain and purchase items. Uh, so it's very interesting what is what has happened to society as, as a whole. There's a lot of protests. Uh, there's a lot of international uh, strife, if you will, because it's a slow unwinding economic collapse that is happening because of this hack, if you will. Uh, you know, the president is speaking upon it, President, you know, Obama, they had him on the show speaking about it and identifying Tyler Wellick and F Society as the culprits, culprits of the F9 hack, or the 5-9 hack, if they will. So a lot is happening, and because of that, I think, you know, it seems that Darlene is distressed. Uh, I think she, like I said, she's been very reckless. She's called out by, by Mosby, and she's saying... That you know this this basically kind of needs to get done her way because they basically don't have Elliot uh, she, she's indicating to Mosby but this stuff is going to work what she's planning because we, they have to continue on I mean they haven't won in essence so they do this this ransomware Mosby and Darlene and what they did was they had basically So Scott knows the man that took the position that Tyler Wellick wanted is is going to be the guy that's going to deliver the money to the Battery Park. Uh, he's also the husband of the woman that Tyler Wellick murdered on top of the rooftop, which is very interesting given that all that has happened that a month after, basically or a little bit more than a month after all those events happened, that he is still working at E-Corp. He's still functioning in some fashion. Um, I found that very interesting and very telling, if you will. But he has a conversation with Susan Jacobs and Philip Price, who is the CEO of e Evil Corp. And basically it was Price that pushed that the fact that they should pay the ransom. Uh, he agreed with Susan J Jacobs that suggested it. Philip Price was saying that they should, in fact, not use any security personnel or fake person, but actually use a chief operation officer. And, you know, Scott, Scott Knowles volunteered for that. Uh, it was a very interesting conversation. Uh, and one of the interesting aspects of it was that 
Phil Pricing is very blasé, if you will, about all of this. I mean, he seems to be on top of it, but his the mannerisms and the manner which upon which he is, he is approaching everything seems that it's it's not a bother. It's not a big deal. Everything's going to resolve itself. I'm not sure if this is him projecting some kind of false sense of confidence or he has knowledge or hidden knowledge, if you will. Uh, we did see him last season with the um, White Rose, um, you might say her civ her civilian persona, uh, at the party that was happening uh, on the day of the hack. So they these two know one another, uh, what that relationship is, and they do have some kind of business relationship. Uh, we don't know the full nature of it, or the full nature of even White Rose's civilian persona, if you will, and her association with uh, Philip Price. But he he has been projecting thus far uh, throughout this episode this, uh, this kind of blase-ness about, about this hack. So Scott knows, you know, he goes to Battery Park. He is given a, a package by, by a messenger. He's very nervous, very agitated. He's talking to somebody, his security personnel that is watching him. And is going to move in uh, and scoop, scoop up anybody who tries to go for the money. But it turns out nobody's going to go for the money. Uh, in the package is a note uh, and an F Society mask. So he puts on the mask. He pulls out all the money. The security guards are freaking out, wondering what he's doing. He's still kind of freaking out himself. But he's pulling out all the money, all this cash, $5.9 million of it. And then he lights it on fire. Um, of course, everybody notices it. Everyone notices him pulling out the cash. Everyone notices him pulling um, and burning the cash. Everyone's got their phones out. They're filming him. Um, who else is watching? Of course, is Darlene. It's revealed as he pulls off the F Society mask that's, uh, you know, on it says that if you don't uh, do as we say, uh, we'll break everything. He had received a phone call that informed him that that's what he needed to do was follow the instructions or this is what's going to happen. And he does it. And of course it, it kind of makes the news and it's, it, that leads to intermission, but I just kind of wanted to get the darling stuff out of it because again, she, you know, she breaks into Susan Jacobs smart home, uses it as a headquarter base. Uh, she has a lot of people coming over. She, she helps, I guess you can say, instigate the cutting off the balls of the Wall Street bull. Uh, what's the other thing she does? Uh, she does this ransomware thing. She does this very big public stunt where she gets, you know, Scott knows the CTO to burn $5.9 million. And of course, she is in the background there watching everything that's happening. So these are kind of very reckless moves, very bold, very public moves, which is very different from the way F Society had acted before, which everything was kind of hidden in the background, except for the videos, which seem to be have been carefully planned, thought out, and put out there to prevent and obfuscate any kind of identity of any individual that might be associated with the hacking of itself. So we're going to end that part of the discussion of Darlene. We can get back to Elliot and man, Elliot is having a time. He is visited by Gideon and Gideon visits F Elliot because the FBI doesn't believe that he is not behind the hack. They think he actually might be behind it and that, or he's protecting the person who is. Uh, Elliot, of course, he's like, you know, I heard about All Safe, and Gideon's like, you know, I want to rebuild, but everyone's telling me it's over. You know, he's saying that someone's hacking into his emails. He thinks it might be the FBI, but he's unsure. He changes his passwords. Uh, he does all the, you know, the security checks, but it doesn't matter. Someone's logging in at different hours and different parts of the day. Of course, Mr. Robot is there and present, and... He's saying, you know, are you really going to let Gideon take the fall for all this? He's, you know, he's toying with Elliot. Uh, Elliot's head starts bleeding to where the point where he, you know, might have been shot. Uh, of course, Gideon doesn't notice this because this is, again, all in Elliot's head. 
um, Elliot is actually talking to both Gideon and Mr. Robot at the same time, so it causes a lot of confusion about who it is that Elliot is responding to because he's saying no and he's saying yes and Giddy doesn't know what's going on. Mr. Robot is like, well, are you going to tell Gideon that you're you're going mad and that your entire mind is, you know, your entire being is disintegrating? Um, Gideon is begging Elliot to reveal, you know, the truth, to tell the FBI the truth so that he can basically, you know, live his life. Gideon can live his life. But Elliot's like, I can't help you. I don't know what you're talking about. And Gideon says that, you know, I know things about you. I can tell them you know, about the day that you left and let the FBI know that. I mean, you need to tell the truth. And Elliot was like, I, I can't help you with anything and basically ends the conversation and, and leaves Gideon. Which is very sad because, you know, Gideon is probably the most innocent person out of all this. He's a good person. He tried to stop what was happening or what he thought was happening. He tried to do things right. You know, he's a guy that, you know, Everyone talks about, you know, crosses his eyes, dots their T's, and does everything that you're supposed to do in life, and he still got shot upon anyways. Um, he basically got used and spit up by both E Corp, Evil Corp, and, and, and Elliot, in essence. And he is just, he's just a tragic figure, as none of this is of his, you know, doing, if you will. But... You know, Elliot's not going to tell him the truth. Elliot's not going to reveal what has happened. So, Elliot continues to have issues with Mr. Robot. They still have, you know, discussions and dialogues and stuff like that. It gets to the point to where there's a bit of a confrontation. And basically, he's like, you need to tell me what happened. Or that's it. And Elliot is like, and Mr. Robot is not going to do that. So we pretty much, you know, that that's pretty much what happened within the first first episode there. There's a lot of weirdness. Um, there is a, uh, of course, it's Mr. Robot, so there's a lot of weirdness. Uh, there is a um, website that I'll show a link to that's being, uh, it's all part of the kind of, extra reality that the the show does um the show robot shows that does for us um it's called contract industries which is also on the, the name that's on the journal and it's like a really kind of geo city type of a website uh there is a theory it's and i'll mention it here right now called the prison theory in which elliot is actually in prison and that all that we're seeing is an illusion and there's a lot that so kind of supports it uh, we'll talk a little bit more about that in this in the second episode, but initially, what is the idea is that because Elliot is in this very boxed up room, he has a very regiment routine. He has to kind of ask permission. He goes to a church group. He is isolated. Uh, Darlene sometimes visits him. Um, there's basically the majority of the people that he's interacting with um, on his daily routine are men. Uh, he, he, the recreational game is only one game, which is uh, basketball, which is kind of like an outgrowth, typical activity that is within a prison group system. Uh, one of the guys that he interacts with, um, his name is Ray, um, which he interacted with this episode, but more so this, the next episode. Um, has a dog. Um, people around him when Ray walks around and talks to Elliot kind of migrate away, move away, the fact that it's a lot of what is happening in the episode, the, the people and stuff like that, the, the nature of Gideon's conversation might be more of a visitor's, visitor's room, and the fact that Mosby and Darlene, uh, the way they talk about where Elliot is, but not specifically where he is, um, indicates that he might be in jail for something. Uh, obviously not for this hack, but he's obviously, he's in jail. So we'll talk about that more in the second season, but I just want to touch a little bit about it because I know that's a prominent theory. Uh, the other thing I want to talk about is the fact that, you know, there's a lot of uh, hidden stuff in the in the episode as far as um, reality stuff like Bitcoin existing, ransomware, which is a crypto cryptography thing that um, exists out there in the world. The fact that in Elliot's journal, you briefly see a... Uh, 
a QR code that leads to a website, which is a Contour website. The kind of brief code information we see in um, Elliot's stuff uh, has some kind of hints or indications that if maybe we put it all together, it might mean something. Um, but the title, first part of the title of this episode, the t TC is a uh, it's a cartography, a cartography uh, indication, a security one. And let me look up the information of what specifically that means. So TC is the file extension for TrueCrypt volume, which is a form of creating an op it's an open source uh, disk, disk encryption program. So that is the, the ending title of the TC for part one and part two. So that's very interesting because it, because encryption has played a part in the encrypting of the Evil Corp servers as well as the ransomware. So again, this is just a little hint that the show has done. Another aspect of the show that people have noticed is the fact that the music of the show is um, a lot of the, the stuff, the visuals, is very muted, is very analog uh, because Elliot is removing himself from the internet, removing himself from the digital world to keep uh, Mr. Robot at bay, to prevent him from having access to those things to kind of take, care, take control of Elliot. So a lot of the music is less synth, synth uh, less electronica and more... Uh, you know, instrument based, uh, more bass, if you will. Something that's um, also less upbeat, if you, if you will think about it, because it seems that Elliot is, you know, even in a darker place than he has been. So things are very, uh, the, the color tone is very darker. Um, there's a, a significant contrast to the different places that he is in, particularly when he's in his room with Mr. Robot. It seems like the when Mr. Robot is present, the room is a little bit darker than than it is when Mr. Robot is not present, where, the, where there's light and there's people around. Uh, I think that's very interesting. Also, the, the, the version of the man in black that Elliot takes notes of, uh, he, he seems to have more of a religious aspect, if you will. These are the kind of things that... Um, that are, are different and new for the, the season and are present in this episode. But that concludes the, the first part of the season, season one. Um, I'm going to log off now of this chat. And I hope you continue with us as we come back on for the chat about the second part of the season premiere of Mr. Robot Unmasked Part 2. Thank you and logging off. Thank you for joining us on this chat. You can find us on all podcast outlets such as iTunes, Google Play, SoundCloud, MixCloud, and any podcast catcher. You can reach us on Twitter at FSocietyIRC, our website at FSocietyIRC.xyz. You can email us at FSocietyIRC at ProtonMail.com. Our music attributes are under the Creative Commons license number three. The intro music is by Monk. The song is called The Planet Shakers, the Paragraph Remix. Our outro music is by Trevet Halbeka, and the song is Zelta Kappa, as well as Quana, and the song is Demons. You can support the show either via the QR code in the show notes by contributing with a Bitcoin or through PayPal, and there's a link in the show notes where you can PayPal me under Herosia Scheib. If you're very into uh, cryptocurrency, you can also tip me through a uh, chain chip at Herosia or at one name at Herosia. Thank you very much for listening and look forward to hearing from you. Logging off.